Hello guys, good day to you, welcome to this new video, I'm Manny from Yellow Hat Games and today we're going to make a tutorial, this is a tutorial about making some lava, a lava cascade, yeah, we're going to make a lava cascade, and what we're going to do is nothing fancy, it's just something that is falling from up to down, and we're going to use a few elements here, we're going to use a node d a shader, a texture that is going to simulate the lava, and we're going to use definitely a raycast to understand in which point the lava is colliding, and maybe we're going to use some particles as well. So let's jump inside Godot and let's do it. Okay guys, first of all, I already have some tests here, but we're going to make it from scratch. So first of all, what we're going to do is create a new scene. Okay, we created our first node and what we need here is just something that moves with the mouse. It's going to move with my mouse, like you can see. Okay, it's just an area to the, it, it's just for a demonstration. You don't really need this. Now, first of all, that we need is a line to D. So just go and add a line to D. Now, if you don't know how lines to D work, well, they are quite powerful, and I think that you should definitely use them. Now, to add some points here, we need two points for to create a line. So basically, just go here, create points, click on that, click on the editor, and create that point. Now, you can easily understand that this line is not really stride so basically to make it really stride we need to go here under points click on the pull vector to the array click there and you can see that there are two points there is a zero there is a one and this actually means that this is a fair to the first point because they are indexed like that now to make sure that they are aligned just change the x coordinate to zero on both of those and they're going to be aligned on the zero now there are a few important things here you can see that there is a width that i'm going to make 20 and you'll understand soon why and another thing is the color that i need it white and last but not least what we need is actually this other thing here the fill property here you can see that we can add a texture here okay now what you need actually is to grab your texture just grab it it's just a texture of 2420 it's really small because we need to tile it so drag and drop it under texture there and you'll see that nothing is happening and that's because a few things need to be tweaked first of all we go here under texture mode and we change it to tile here we have our texture but nothing is happening we need to re-import it and we're going to disable the filter because you know, we're working with pixel art and we don't want it very blurry. And here under repeat, we need to enable it. If you re-import it now, you'll see that our lava is there, but it's not on the right way. So basically, we need to rotate our texture. So, and rotate. Yes. Okay, we have our lava. It looks nice. It's just a straight line here and it's looking okay now we need a shader on this so just go here under material select new shader and here under shader new visual shader we're going to use a visual shader this shader works only with 3d so we need to change that go here under mode and select canvas item and this way we have the right one so we're not going to make very fancy things we're just going to change the uv coordinates and to make that we need a uv obviously uv input and uvs are actually a vector 3 so we need to decompress that decompress so we have the single coordinates and then we need to recompress everything so compress decompose and compose basically these are the right names then we need a texture so we're going to type here texture and we're going to use the texture 2d from the screen there and we're going to output it and you can see that nothing is happening because we're not doing anything so to make the change we need a timer basically and we're going to change this with the timer like you can see a lot of things happens if i connect the timer there but we don't want to do that we just want to go on the x coordinate grab actually an additional operator like that and we're going to add the coordinate there you can see that it's moving on the wrong side, so just subtract it, and it's working very nice. So we have our lava that is moving. Now to make it a little bit cooler, actually, to have more power, to have more freedom on using this thing aside from the shader editor, well, you can add here just a uniform. Scalar uniform. Uniforms actually are variables that you can use directly from the editor. They are exported there, so you change this in speed, the name, and you give this a range plus step and the minimum range is going to be zero the maximum range or in my case it's going to be 
10 and we're going to give this a default value that is going to be 1. Now what you need to do is to multiply the timer by this value here. So multiply and just grab the, the operator here and you can see that you can multiply this value. The result, we're going to subtract it and it's working nice. But now if I go here on the editor, just go here under the shader properties and use the shader parameter. We have the speed. If I increase this, it's going to move pretty fast. Look at this. This is moving quite fast now. Very nice, right? But I'm going to use it at one. Okay. So this is our lava. Basically we have something that is moving and it's looking great. It's looking nice. And you can use this definitely on your games. Now, if you want to make it a little bit cooler, well, you can detect the collision with the lava. So what we're going to do is basically just go here, grab a raycast. And this raycast is going to start from the starting position of the lava and it's going to be a little bit bigger than the screen. To make sure that that works actually, what we need to do is just go on the raycast. I'm going to change this and selecting it, I'm going to enable it. And here I'm going to give this a, uh, a dimension like it's going to be fine. Okay, we're, we're good to go now. We're good to go. So we definitely need a script. Just go and add the script to the lava. So first of all, we need to initialize it. So we're going to use the ready function and to make sure that everything works, we're going to use obviously the raycast to, to detect if there is any collision on the beginning. And we're going to change the second point of the line. So we're going to change that position according to the collision. So how to make that? Well, we just check under the ready function. So function ready. And I'm going to go here if C ray is colliding like that. If that happens, well, we're going to change the second point. So set point basically, set point position, and the index of the second point is actually one. And here we need to put a vector two that is going to be the position of the of the second point. So how is this position going to be? And, and here we're going to grab a few things. Now the X coordinate is going to be actually zero. So here's the complex part. So basically what we're going to do now is just go on the raycast that get point collision, collision point dot Y. We need to make sure that this thing actually works under a function Delta as well. Function Delta. I'm just going to copy and paste this and Bam. Now, one last thing before we even try this, because it's going to act weird at the moment, but before we even try, just make sure that you, on the collide with, check areas as well, because I'm, I'm working with areas as well. So if you go here, you'll see that it's kind of working, okay? It's working okay, right? Each time you collide, it changes its size. Now, what is happening is that it's working, but if we change the position of this thing, okay, if we run this, you'll see that there's something strange happening. The collision point, actually, it's not working that well. We thought it's working, but it's not working. There is a huge space between the collision box and the node 2D, basically, the, the line 2D. And why is it happening? It's because our global position. So somehow we need to change that, calculate that lacking. And what we're going to do is to add this position to our point, basically, if this position is negative. And if this position is positive, we're going to subtract it. So to make that, what we're going to do is just go here under getCollisionPoint.y and we're going to add brackets like that. And what we're going to do here is just get global position. And we're going to multiply this by minus one. And this is going to change the sign of our value. So if it's negative, it's going to be positive. So we're going to add it. And if it's positive, it's going to be negative. So we're going to subtract it. And just grab this like that. Copy and paste here. If we run this, we should be okay. Because now we have some lava that is changing, right? It's on the right spot. Another thing that we need to do is definitely to make some movement for the lava that falls down if we get away from the lava. So definitely use a variable speed. It's going to be 500 because it works quite well with the delta function. 
So um, here, if we're not colliding, what we're going to do is to set the point and it's going to be the one the position is going to be the vector 2 and we're going to say and we're going to say just get point position okay and the point position of the second point so and it's going to be the y coordinate okay and we're going to add here plus we're going to add speed multiplied for delta and our important thing here is to clamp this value because this will run forever basically so we're going to put some brackets here and I'm going to add a min before it. This is going to get our the minimum value between two. So another value that is going to be the max value that we can reach. And this other value is going to be the raycast dimension. So what we're going to do is just go C array that get cast two. And what we need is only the Y position. It should be working quite fine right now. We have some lava that's that falls down each time, right? Now, last but not least, we're going to add some particles. Particles. We're going to use this 2D particles here. Just go here, give it under material, a new particle material. Like you can see, it's just a point there and we need to change the emission shape to sphere, change this one to something like nine or 10. The emission amount, I'm going for 50 because it's cooler. Last but not least, change the gravity, maybe you can go for minus 98. You can change the, you know, these values here to tweak it a little bit. We can change the scale actually to make it a little bit bigger, much nicer like that. Now we're going to change the lifetime here, maybe 0 0.7. So another important thing definitely is to go here under color. You can use here a color ramp, so new gradient. And here under new gradient, we're going to use it like that so basically just go and change this one for example i really like the red ones or you can make it yellow like that so just go and have fun with some gradient changing the gradients basically you're going to change the look of this thing and last but not least what we need is actually to change under time and it's going to be one shot basically okay just give a script to this particle to d like that so first of all, in the script, what we're going to do is just to under ready function to initialize it. So just right here a meeting. Okay, that one is true. This way is going to start on the beginning of everything. So then we need to check if it's not a meeting to Q3. So what we're going to do is go under function delta here like that and check if it's a meeting. Okay, like that and Q3 like this okay so last but not least we're going to add these particles when it collides when the lava collides with something so so to make that first of all we need to load this lava on the lava line so what we're going to do is just to create a variable and load here i'm going to grab the particle scene drop there and there we have it okay now what we're going to do is to create a function so and we're going to pass here a position so first of all, a variable here, new particles equals to lava p dot instance. And next thing is to change the position actually, new p dot position like that equals to pose. And last but not least, we're going to add the child, a child new p. Now we're going to call this function under the collisions. If the ray is colliding, what we're going to do is to call create p. And we're going to pass a position here and this position is going to be the position of the second point of the line so just get point position and the index is going to be one now if you run this it should be fine it should be working you can see there is some there are some particles right there right now this is working but you see that there is something off there and to make it a little bit cooler actually I'm going to call here a random random randomize that is going to randomize our seed and what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to use a variable variable uh is going to be a value okay and this value is going to be actually a randomized value random random range between minus 10 to 20 okay that way we're going to get this value and what I'm going to do here on the position, basically, I'm going to put a vector to on the X coordinate. I'm going to grab the position post post that X. I'm going to add this value 
And then we're going to put the pose.y. And it should be cooler actually. Look at that. It looks much better. It looks so much better. Okay guys, another important thing definitely is to not create all those particles because they're going to drain all of the power of your computer. So basically you need something that to be fluid. So you can decide, you know, how many particles you create on a second and so on. I think that you can create just one per second or two per second. They're going to be fine. And just make sure that everything runs smoothly. So that's my main suggestion. Hopefully this video wasn't that long. Hopefully you learned something, you liked the video. So if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on the bell notification just to make sure that you don't lose any of my further videos. And more important, keep devving games!